It's for us actually a new thing to do downwind sailing and it is very nice <laughs> and there's some new tricks that we need to learn for this downwind sailing. But I was thinking of making a video of all our clips that we've done over the last one and a half year of sailing of the performance of a Leopard, Leopard 45. It is a very difficult thing to do, so you guys have to bear with me for a while um, because for every point of sail, you guys also want to know every single wind condition like at 5 knots, 10 knots, 50 knots, 20 knots and 25 knots and sometimes even 30 knots but at the same time also, like now, we have 20 knots but the sea state is absolutely flat so it is also different sea state so not only you want to know for, for example at this moment we at 120, 150 uh, downwind you also want to know 450, 10, 20 knots I would say 10, 15, 20 knots and you also want to know calm waters, medium waves, big waves and things like that which makes it kind of like impossible because it is for the say for example broad reach, beam reach, close reach that's three times three for say 15, 20, 25 knots or maybe 5, 10, 15, 20 knots so it's 3 times 4 and then flat seas, small waves, medium waves so that's again times another big waves times another, another 4 so it's 12 times 4 so it's 36 different clips and then another question was coming up how how's the slamming happening is slamming happening um, is there lots of noise in the cabins those things I'm going to cover but not for all uh, and what, uh, what did we say for all of those points it's going to be a little bit difficult but the clips I do have I will share with you I didn't even mention Sometimes you want to see it with the Genoa and sometimes you want to see it with the Code D and sometimes with the main up and sometimes with the main down Sometimes the main reefed and sometimes the main not reefed so it's just too many variations which I will not cover so but all the clips that we did do I will cover of course in the beginning when we left Cape Town we were a very newbie so we just put the sails up and hope for the best so we might have even made a couple of mistakes to that actually could hamper the performance of the Leopard 45 but let's start with say downwind sailing okay so we went wing on wing with the Cody and the Genoa and we also cleat it on mid cleat so the sheet is on mid cleat mid ship's cleat and it's such a big area of sail now so what are we doing let's go have a look with the sails only in the front up we are doing now out of true wind speed of 13 knots of wind or 12 knots we're doing 5.5 so uh, not even uh, now it's almost 50 percent of true wind speed and there's some other numbers if you are interested in okay, we're downwind sailing we can only now look now 
we have a little bit of a problem here because this little red dot and white dot says the, the spread so if we put the sail wing on wing we have a problem that is good but we will have a problem there so anyway so for true wind true wind speed of 16 we do about say so, yeah, this is what we do over the water or through the water and you can see the parent wind at this moment is 10 and we have all the sails up not reefed at all and that one is not performing well because of the little swing that we do you can see so maybe i should change a little bit our course and that will work better and a sea state and the sea state is pretty flat Run back, zoom We're doing not too bad with our parent wind. The wind is our true wind speed is around 15, and our parent wind is 9, 8, 8, 9. We're doing 6.7 knots, and the current is definitely helping us. About what 0.9, one knot of a current there. If you look at this little purple thing over there, and why are we doing so good? because we've got the big mine up and this is one of the things of a catamaran the shrouds act as backstay so you must make sure that the backstay that the battens is not breaking over your shrouds there you can see so we cannot make we cannot let the boom out more because that is the problem with catamarans so now what we're going to do as you can see our topping lift is just swinging 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 so we're going to tighten the topping lift so that the topping lift can also start acting as a backstay okay so now we tighten our topping lift so the topping lift is now very tight so between the topping lift and the, the sheet lines we actually created now a backstay and then we have our preventer on because we are swinging quite a lot as the gas is coming through so on downwind sailing well more or less downwind not dead run we do get around 65% of the polar performance in 17 knots of true wind speed that is not too bad so the wind is 15 16 and it looks good well we can improve 30 percent but i'm not sure how so now the wind can pressure can put a lot of pressure on this on a mast we have the two shrouds that's helping us but also now the backstay actually the topping lift is working like a backstay this is more or less what we do for 16 knots we do around five and sometimes we will even go up to 5.5 5.6 And you can see that sail is now much more happier full sails and the sea state is very flat very 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 flat okay here is Broadridge so this is our course over this is our heading Heading is an autopilot, 
and this is the course over uh, that's the course over ground over there so you guys can see now what the leeway is it's around eight degrees seven six degrees leeway For broad reach, what I've seen many, many times is I can basically look at my true wind speed and just do that and you will see more or less what your speed will be. So the wind is picking up and you will see our speed will start picking up to become the 8. So I can just remove the 10 and we will be there. Um, it's not always just like that but you can deduct 10 more or less 10 from the true wind speed and you will know what your speed is going to be and that is just with the genoa and with the main so obviously we are newbies because we do not get to the polar diagrams and we're not sure whether we trim the sails incorrectly or what is going on but yeah, like I said, downwind sailing is a new concept so we still need to learn how to set it so this video is not for the professionals this is for guys that started out just like us without any knowledge of how to sail a boat 20 wind vane And now that we covered the, the, the broad reach, let's look at the beam reach. And beam reach, we've not done a lot of that. Um, because beam reach on wacky waves is not so nice. But let us, let's look at what we can get together for, for the beam reach. On beam reach, this is what we do here. And it's still flat seas at this moment, still very, very flat seas, not much going on. It is really flat seas. But we are swinging. Oh, we are swinging quite a lot. So you can see the rudder is struggling to keep us there. So let me do that. Uh, beam reach. This is what we get with beam reach. We're getting now into a beam reach. It's sometimes not making it, but again, this is our course over our heading autopilot. You can see it's struggling a little bit. I need maybe to depower the main a little bit more. And that is our course over ground. So our course over ground and autopilot heading is not that far.
Beam Ridge sailing is so much nicer than this beating into the wind and crazy waves and just so nicer. Also I think because the wind has not blown that much yet. It only came up a few minutes ago. So the sea is still relatively flat and calmish. And the wind is here. And we are sailing very nicely, very fast, very well, very stable. Very nice sailing. Okay, beam reach done. Let's look at what I got together for close reach. And this is now where things is getting a little bit more tricky because we've done a lot of close reach and sometimes we call it even crawling mode, 4x4 four four rock crawling, which is like we get so close to the wind as possible because we want to slow down our speed. So many times we were actually at not even close reach, we were actually pinching just to try and slow the boat down because the waves is too high and the sea state is just not good. But let's have a look at that. And while we're looking at that, I will also maybe put a couple of clips together of slamming. Because this is maybe where we get slammed the most if we do experience slamming. Downwind, not as much. This is what we do in flat seas on close reach so true wind speed is around there it is just a main sail and the Genoa and we very close to close reach and this is what we're getting with 20 knots of true wind speed actually 20 knots of parent wind speed 70 knots of wind through wind we have through speed 20, 21, 22 close reach this is what we get 9 knots at 80% of our polar performance.
We started our secret weapon. The code zero. Let's see whether we actually have a secret weapon or not, or whether it's working or not. Let's go and check it out. Doesn't look that good. We will wait for lighter winds because as we go closer to the island, um, it will die down because of the high pressure system. So we actually, a little bit in front of them, so we do naturally have lighter wind than they have. But in the current, in the current conditions, with the wind more than 10 knots, Code Zero doesn't make any difference over the Genoa. So either the Genoa is well, well, well designed, uh, or the Code Zero is badly designed, or both. Or the Code Zero will only work in very light winds and will outperform the Genoa in very light winds. But we will have a chance. We still have 80 miles to go and the wind will be dead before we arrive there. So it will just gradually die down as we get closer to the high pressure, the center, uh, the center of the high pressure system. But for now, doesn't look good. We have a spare Genoa. <laughs> Catamarans are known for the fact that they cannot point well into the wind. And although Sisu can point quite well, um, relatively speaking again, uh, nothing like a performance catamaran like Utohamer or a, one of these gunboats or stuff like that. So, um, and for sure not the same as a mono. But you can have the illusion that you are pointing very high into, into the wind. But I'm going to show you now that even though you might see on your true wind angle that you are very high, pointing very high, I want to show you something about your leeway in that case. Of course this will also depend a lot on your sea state, but you can see that my true wind angle is around 40 degrees, around there and my speed is about five knots um, that is speed over water or through the water is 5.5 speed over ground is about five so we have a little bit of a current against us um, but look at our vmg our vmg in the top left corner is around 4.9 just below our our speed over ground 
so we have a very good angle and the wind is at a very good angle towards us so we can we can keep this course but check now if I increase five degrees so you check now our VMG so the VMG you need now to check I'm going to increase with five degrees okay five degrees more um, off the wind and It's not working. <laughs> but hold on, hold on. Wind was a little bit in a lull there. Uh, we know 10, 10 knots of wind, so the wind just dropped as I was doing this. But let's see what's happening. <coughs> hmm. You see, our angle is still, the wind is definitely changing. So I'm going to, I'm going to put 10 degrees more. And now we're at 115. So I'm now, and if you can see now there, I'm going to about 55. We were at 54, 60 around there. Now our speed over ground is 5.6. Check our VMG is picking up. 5.5. 5.6. So even though that our angle is now towards our um, destination is now worse because we're going much faster our VMG increased and I'm almost sure we will if we just keep at it we will get to 6 knots <coughs> that is definitely faster than it was when we started and as you can see I, I actually added 15 degrees so that, that, that is the trick of a catamaran if you just look at your VMG and don't be afraid, fall off a little bit and then see what happens with your, with your VMG. Something that, that Sisu doesn't like is a confused sea state. I'm not sure whether other boats is the same, but if there's no pattern in the waves and the waves is going crazy and, and the wind is is between 10 to 20 knots, you know, like gusting up and down and, and also changing directions quite often, especially like here yeah, in acceleration zones, then it's just crazy. Um, and I think the sails cannot... That's not what I think. I think the sails is, is shaped like an airplane wing. And me being a pilot, also think that if the wind is not flowing nicely over the airplane wing, then the airplane doesn't fly, it, it actually falls. So you cannot, if the airplane, if the wing is shaped like, like this and the airplane is flying like this, if you turn the airplane like this into the wind, so like uh, it's flying like this and in the next moment you turn it like this and push it like that direction it will fall as well the wind has to come over the wing from the front and it has to come from a certain angle as well over the front otherwise the attack angle will be too big and again there will be too much drag and the plane will fall and this is the same with these sails if the sails the sails is, is also now shaped like an airplane so if the sails is going like this the whole time it's going fast and then it stalls it goes fast and then it stalls so it can go now the boat has been pulled and now the boat is actually stalled the, the the sail is stalled but also this way so if it's rolling quite a lot like where here we go again like this then also i think the airplane is not flying so our sails is not flying and for this we switched on now our leeward engine for two things the first one is to help the sails because we're just not sailing uh, Sisu is not a happy catamaran at this moment um, if we switch the engines off we will go between five knots boat speed to about 1.2 knots and I see like one or two of these big motions and then we're down to one knot or 1.2 knots 
So for that reason I started a levered engine so that it can help when the sail is doing this or this. But also for a second reason is they say that if I start a starboard engine then a catamaran's leeway is actually then reduced. I'm looking at it, I'm not sure it is reduced. This sea is just not a happy sea. So there's a, a swell running like that and a swell running like this. So it's causing this diamond kind of like waves. Yeah, there you can see that one goes there. This looks so weird and Sisu doesn't like it. The majority of the waves is coming from here because they come around that mountain and the wind is now more or less from here. But the true wind according to Windy is actually from that side. Uh, yeah. We go quite crazy. So we we reefed again. We're now on reef one. And as we reef, the wind dropped again. But I think we're going to keep it on the reef. Look at the sea. Very short, choppy waves. Not nice. Look at that. Ah, going to get whacked again. Oops. Daisy. You may ask, how is it inside? Do we get slammed in this choppy seas? A relatively quiet inside. This is the, the master head. So this is the windward side, how front peak. This would be the most noisiest. Let's wait for a good slam. That's the slam. This is the forward peak leeward hull. This one is much deeper in the water. Uh, much is now not much, but you can see if we do get slammed, it will be from the inside. So the inside hull will feel it.
and that's the slam. Uh, leeward aft cabin, very nice view of the sea. And this is over here, we're a little bit deeper in the water. The bed is almost level with the water in this in this cabin. Nice view. For me, there's a few reasons that I, I deducted in our couple of miles that we've done so far, why the sea state is confused. First, it is a change of wind. Um, so the wind is, and it's, 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 it's just a, a low pressure system running through or something like that. So. And of course, as it goes to one direction, the, the wind is changing. So that's one, one reason that it is changing. The other one is acceleration zones between islands. So that is also definitely one. Um, because the wind is just like picking up like crazy. And all of a sudden you will find yourself in... That the wind is shooting up from 10 knots to... 19 knots as it is now, 21, 22 knots, and and it will it will be sustained at that 22 knots for quite a while. So it's not like a squall; it's an acceleration zone between the islands. And then the other one is because we're between the islands um, and we're still very close to the Grand Canaria Islands. There's a coastal shelf. So here is a thousand or two thousand meters deep. Currently, yeah, two thousand five hundred meters deep where we are here. And yes, a couple of yeah, two miles that direction, it is hundred meters deep. So all of this energy is hitting that shelf and then bounce back. So it's like a ricocheting of this energy of the waves. And um, the top of the wave is still going on, but the bottom of the wave is being pushed back into the sea. So we've got waves from that side, we've got the normal northeaster from that side, and then we have the acceleration zone, and also then the Venturi effect, where the wind is also being channeled into this little channel, the acceleration zone. And that makes it just crazy. It's not nice sailing weather, or sailing seas. And this is the North Atlantic, so <laughs> these wells have a lot of time to build up. So yeah, we're going crazy up and down. Okay, let's have a look at fuel consumption. We had about 0.9 knots of current against us when we did this experiment of how much fuel we used. I've got fuel sensors in the in the engine room. Um, I extended the Raymarine cable, network cable into the engine room and added a little converter that takes the diagnostics from the fuel from the engine into the Raymarine network. So the Raymarine, the Axiom could have could show me what is the fuel consumption per engine. And this is what I used. So if we look at at one point the engine was running at 1,500 um, revs and then I set one engine at 2,000 revs and uh, then I switch it over to 2,200 revs and this is the results that I got for that and then I put it over to 2,500 and I basically did the same for both engines to see whether if both engines are working that the engines are maybe not working as hard as only one engine is working and the results is out. So I put that all into a spreadsheet to calculate what it is and here is the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet actually shows the same as we just saw in the video but the interesting thing is 
between me and Pietro we try to figure out how much it will or when at what stage is the distance that the time of the amount of time that we use to cover the same distance because if you say you go at say seven knots you might reach a certain place a certain time earlier or take a shorter time so you use less hours while if you take say 1.5 liters per hour and 1,500 1, revs it takes you maybe a week longer to get there so you use a little bit more fuel to get there and this is it hope you found some interesting information if you like please put a thumbs up or not both thumbs just press the button thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe if you like what we offered you and if you hear anyone from any other channels or forums that's talking about similar situations please just mention us that is free for you and it will help us a lot thank you for watching